All right, everyone. Welcome back to my channel here. We've got spoilers for Murders at Karlov, and we're looking at what I think are going to be the top 10 mythics from this set. And let's go through them, and I'll let you know why I feel like these will be the top 10 for me. We got Tristani, Three Whispers, 16 mana, 4-4, four, four, Dryad, Creature, White, and Green. Activate 5 White and Green. Your creatures gain Death Touch, Life Link, and Double Strike until end of turn. Then all your creatures get to plus 2, plus 1. The reason that I like this card a lot is because those five activate green or white gems. It's really not going to be that hard to hit those activated gems, especially if they end up being green. A lot of green conversion. So you're basically just going to be giving your creatures life link and double strike uh, in any green conversion deck. So I think that's really strong. Uh, and then all your creatures are going to be buffed up a pretty decent amount. Say you hit five of those green, you're basically going to be giving all your creatures plus 10, plus five if you do that. So that's not bad. That actually makes this card a decent body to hit with. So is it going to be in everybody's decks? Probably not, but I think it's strong enough to consider in a lot of different decks. Aurelia's Vindicator, 20 mana. Got lifelink, flying, disguise 10, 4 2, creature angel. At the beginning of your turn, if this card's in your hand, increase this card's level by 1. Disguise 10. When this creature is revealed, exile the first X cards from your graveyard. When this creature attacks, return the first X cards from your exile to your hand. X is this card's level. Then the last two cards in your hand gain full mana. So it looks like you probably don't actually have to put the cards from your graveyard into exile. You just got to get them into your exile however you want. And uh, if you're drawing a lot of cards, that's a good way of doing it. Pretty much this card, um, if you're waiting to cast it, it's got tw it takes 20 mana to cast anyway. But so you're probably it's probably not going to be that hard to increase this card's level really and i don't even know if the disguise 10 is that relevant i think if you want to just cast this card as a 20 mana creature that's fine i think every turn you're going to be at least getting one card from your exile into your hand then that card and the last card in your hand before that will get full mana thanks to this creature so only thing about it you know it doesn't have hex proof doesn't have haste it's only a 4-2 so you're going to need to pump it up to make it a creature that you really want to fight with. But if you can keep it on the board, it's got lifelink and it's just going to be doing a lot for getting cards into you into play for you. So pretty cool card. It does have a little bit of hoops that you have to jump through to make it really useful, but I think it still can be. Cease and desist. So this was a card that Gaz spoiled in his reviews of the very first spoilers they gave us. So it's a, a tricolor, 10 mana to cast on one side and 18 mana to cast on the other. Um, exile all cards from target graveyard. Your opponent discards a card. You draw a card and you gain far, four life. Um, the most relevant part of that side is exiling the cards from a graveyard so with all the things that are doing a lot for getting things out of your graveyard exiling your opponent's graveyard is actually going to be pretty relevant especially if faithbound judge is going to stay in standard for a little while longer so that's a good reason to have a card like this but the main reason I think this is a good card is because of the other side, destroy all gems. So most of the time that means you're going to be creating cascades, but you're also going to be destroying any token supports you have. I'm not sure if it's going to be destroying all supports on the battlefield or if it's just going to be reducing their shield count by this, but this is going to be creating a bunch of cascades. So you're probably going to be greatly reducing the number of shields on all 
supports no matter what happens when you actually cast this card so it remains a little bit to be seen exactly how this card will work and um but i think that effect is very powerful and it gives a way to counter a lot of the nasty supports that we're getting in this set along with enabling any positive effects that you get from destroying some of your own token support so yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this card out and seeing if I really like it or not. Rakdos, Patron of Chaos. 16 mana, creature, demon. It's got trample and flying, 6-6. Six, six. At the end of your turn, destroy a random opposing creature. If you can't, destroy an opposing non-simple support. This can affect Vanguard supports. Then, reinforce this creature. So the main reason I think this is such a good card is because it's got utility right when you cast it because your opponent probably won't have a way to counter it until their turn starts. And by that point, you've already destroyed a random opposing creature or support or vanguard and it's reinforcing. So the longer this card stays on the board, the worse it is for your opponent. They just got to find a way to, to get it off the board for you. So uh, the reason it's not a little higher is because if your opponent has a removal waiting for you, then it's really just a 16 mana removal spell if um, wrapped in a creature. So it is really good, but it's only as good as the length of time it could stay on the board. But that's true for most creatures but this one is just a very solid card and it's going in maybe all of my mono red decks and probably a lot of my black decks but yeah really good card agris cost spirit of justice 12 mana 5 7 double strike vigilance white and red creature spirit detective when this creature enters the battlefield or attacks exile target opposing creature with suspect if you can't target opposing creature gain suspect so this is a little bit different of a removal than what we just saw with rakdos it takes a little bit longer for him to be a removal engine and it only affects creatures but the reason i kind of like this card a little bit more cost less and it's also got a lot of utility as a creature on its own even if it didn't do any of the creature removal it's still a pretty solid card at 5-7 with double strike and vigilance so it's a good blocker you could do a lot to pump it up and uh if you throw prevent damage on it that's also pretty much gonna be a really difficult creature to get rid of and uh if you throw death touch on it that's another way to make it close to indestructible so a lot of fun things you can do with this card so I just think it has a l just a tiny bit more utility than Rakdos, but they're about tied to me. Anzrag, the Quake Mole. 15 mana, 8-4 with Berserker. Creature, Mole God. It's red and green. When this creature deals combat damage to a creature, reinforce each creature you control two times. When this creature dies, destroy all gems. So, it's a pretty nasty creature to go up against it's an 8-4 so it'll probably die fairly easily if you're not giving it any sort of extra ability like first strike double strike and what have you prevent prevent damage obviously if you keep it on the board it's useful it's reinforcing each creature you control two times so this thing is going to get big fast if it can stay alive for uh very long and then when it dies, it has utility as well. So I'm very interested in using this, using both of its abilities, basically, probably for different style of decks. But destroying all the gems when this creature dies means it has utility and maybe an Anhelo loop deck for doing all sorts of fun things with that. So yeah, this is going to be fun. Uh, this is definitely one of the ones that I'm going to have a lot of fun building for and i wouldn't be surprised if i create a video around how to use him so very cool can't wait push and pull uh 12 mana on one side 18 on the other 
tricolor card, white, black, and red. Push, destroy all creatures. Pool, return the first three creature cards from your graveyard to play under your control. Then those creatures gain haste and berserker. So yeah, the, depends on how you want to use this card. Do you want to use it just as a board wipe for everybody's creatures, which is <clears throat> a relevant ability, especially if you're if you're going creatureless, um, which you might be doing with mono red or even mono black. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But it's flip side. It's basically a graveyard deploy the gate watch. And then you also give your creatures haste and berserker. So if you have some of these to uh, charge up in your hand, what you could do is you cast one of these, your creatures come out of the grave like a bat out of hell with haste and berserker. Say most of them get destroyed against your opponent's creatures. You have another one, those same three creatures come right back out and are able to do the same thing the next turn. Or, you know, if, if you have more than three creatures in your graveyard, then you can just, if you have a bunch of these to chain off, then you're just going to be taking all of your creatures out of your graveyard or, you know, a lot of them out of your graveyard and putting them back into play and they don't even have imminent death or anything like that. They just have Berserker. So if they survive that Berserker, you're just doing some really wild stuff with your creatures. So, <laughs> yeah, very, very strong card. Kylox's Volt Strider, 14 mana, support card, artifact vehicle, crew 3. Um, if you watched my review on this card, it was one of the spoilers that they gave me to give you guys a sneak peek on this set. You know all about why I think this is a good card. So I'll just go ahead and, and uh, link that review to this part of the video. And you can check it out when you're done watching this one. <clears throat> Urgent Necropsy, 12 mana, spell card, black and green. Destroy the first opposing creature. Collect evidence too. If evidence was collected, destroy all opposing cards. So obviously there's a little bit of a building around this card to get the effect that you really want there. But collecting evidence too really shouldn't be that hard. If you build for this card... It shouldn't be hard to get two clues on the board to destroy. But destroying all opposing cards for 12 mana and, you know, just having a, an extra little hoop to jump through, that's super powerful. Oh, my God. <laughs> and even if you don't have those, destroying the first opposing creature is going to be relevant in, in a lot of situations. So at the very worst, this is a pretty okay creature removal card for green and black so it's probably going to be the least useful in black but having the ability to give this to green giving um an opposing side board wipe it's basically like ruinous ultimatum or something like that minus the vanguard well yeah is it going to affect vanguards as well i'm gonna guess not but just in case it does that's just insane and it will get rid of lands too which is something that ruinous ultimatum can't do but man i love this card i think it's gonna be used a lot you're gonna hate it <laughs> and um yeah it's probably gonna make you lose a few games unless you play it and then it'll probably help you win a lot of games so man can't wait to have it and finally of course if you went through the Spoilers already, you probably took note of this one. Case of the Ransacked Lab, 12 mana, 4 shields, support card, enchantment case. It is blue, because why wouldn't it be? <laughs> At the beginning of your turn, reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by 1. So there you go. It's just solve. Um, that's already, you know, fairly relevant. Even if you never solve this case, it's still an okay card. But to solve, if you cast six or more cards, I don't think that means in a turn. I think that just means in general, if you cast six or more cards, this card gains the solved emblem. And solve, 
When you cast a spell, draw a card, it gains five mana. So I don't think Webcore was around or playing, or maybe nobody on that on their design team was around or playing when Baral, Chief of Compliance, was in Standard and when it had first come out. It basically had this effect, except not even as good, and that card was broken as hell. When you cast a spell, draw a card, it gains five mana. That card was only three mana. What people did was they just packed their decks with Burrell, a bunch of three mana spells, and a win con that triggers from spell casting. So they just basically created these spell loops that whittled you down and you know pretty much gave you a really easy win and i think that is what they're diving into this territory so super good card probably too good i wouldn't be surprised if they put a cap on this card um sometime or another but I hope before they do something like that, I get a chance to play around with it and break it. I know Gauze is going to do this. I know Gauze is hating me for saying all, for giving out all these secrets right now, but you know, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> it's a chase card for sure. And um, yeah, make sure you get it before you're on the receiving end of a nasty raw Vance loop. <laughs> that I create, so yeah, good luck out there. All right, on to our final review spoilers. Let's take a look at the masterpieces next. <laughs> 